Hi everybody, Alex Deploy here from Expert Forex and in this video we're going to be talking about trading loss recovery methods and techniques. There's nothing worse than losing money when trading and we have built a loss recovery EA that is currently being tested for the next two weeks prior to its launch at the end of January. A notification of this EA was sent out at the end of December last year and we looked at the various ways that you could do loss recovery on a low risk basis. And there are some really good actual results that are coming out of this particular system. And strangely enough, you make more profits in this loss recovery process than normal trading. And you'll see a bit of that later on in the video. So last week we made the new robot available for testing. So here's the video go and have a look at the video please have a look at this video to get an overview of the methods used for loss recovery a clickable link will be in the description of the video as well as in the first comment of the video then late last week we made this ea available for testing for the next two weeks and a huge amount of traders have downloaded this ea to test it and in fact, this video is to give those testers and the users some ideas on how to create strategies to provide loss recovery opportunities. The EA that we're using is actually called Profit Retriever, which is almost the same thing as loss recovery. So what I'm going to do now is dial into one of my test servers and we're going to play around with some of the loss recovery processes. So on your screen you can see the strategy tester that has been set up to test the profit retriever. we in version 1.1 beta and I'm going to use be using the pound for this test and I'm going to be testing a, a just slightly over a month period until uh, just before the silly season at the end of the year. So I, I excluded the last say two weeks of the year uh, and we still have a good month period and I'm choosing a month because um, that will enable a quicker feedback on our tests. I'm going to test the pound using a spread of one and I'm going to be using the 15 minute time frame. I'm using very high quality tick data so um, and I must just stress that when you are, you are back testing or optimizing this particular EA, you need to use every tick data for right from the beginning. You can't co convert open prices to tick and that type of thing. You have to do tick data from the very beginning because it's such a precise EA. Okay, so let's go into the uh, settings and um, users of the EA know the settings. There's there's quite a good educational section in the testing part of the forum that explains all the settings, that explains all the concepts that are involved. So I'm not going to repeat all of that. And so basically we look through the settings here and we have a, a number of settings how we can enable loss recovery. Now loss recovery happens when your transaction actually doesn't go in the direction that you want to and it actually goes in the opposite direction and you then say all right now how am I going to re recover that particular loss so in in this particular EA we use a simple moving average to determine the direction of trade so if the average is pointing down we, it, 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 it's a, a sell if, if it's pointing up it's a buy so but that's not really important for this this section here the most important settings for this loss recovery EA are mainly three to four the the price gap size that you use in other words as the price goes against you, you will be taking top-up transactions and the the gap size between the first top-up and the second top-up is what we're talking about there and um, the smaller the gap, the more transactions you're going to open and the bigger the gap, the, the, the fewer. So that's an important setting. Uh, and then we have uh, a setting that says... Uh, you're going to be starting with a particular lot size, but 
you can increase that lot size to help the recovery happen a bit faster so that particular setting is very critical to this process and then there's also a closure level setting this is a little bit of a complicated one basically it says the last transaction that you open will have a target the target is normally the the gap size that you are using at that particular time now do you want this target to be 100 percent of the target or do you want it uh, or do you want it to be bigger like 200 percent of the target or or so on? you can also make it smaller if you want so those three settings drive this whole loss recovery process and as i'm going through some of the tests you'll start getting a feel of that then there are some refinement settings that also apply but i'm not going to go through them we normally start the process with the smallest lot sizing that we can possibly trade which is in this case 0.01 lots so so that as i say if you really want to uh, refine the system you really need to only focus on those three elements then there's a a, a risk re reduction setting which is also quite important which is the fourth setting which basically says how soon do you want to start increasing your lots so you don't have to do them straight away you can actually do it after three three negative transactions or four negative transactions and uh, that's another important so so this is a nice simple ea in that it is only really four moving parts to this ea you can use the rest to refine the ea but that's that's about it so wh what i'm going to do is i'm going to run this ea and i'm going to run it on the basis that there are no lot uh, loss increases so 100 percent represents no loss increases and then the recovery is 100 percent. so whatever the target is for the last transaction opened it will uh, be the gap size of that transaction so that those are uh, uh, these concepts are described in the training material provided in a lot more detail so so let me run this based on no increase and and a, a basic same size recovery and i'm going to say okay and we'll just run it now i'm i am running it on tick data so the process will be slightly slow and that is why i'm keeping the period short for a month or so uh, basically this this is a training video and just to make you familiar with some of the concepts that we're talking about okay all done and let's go and see what the results are so basically it says if if uh, if we just kept the same lot sizing and we cashed in this the same amount that that represents the gap size uh, we would make a 400 dollar profit on a ten thousand dollar investment now that's only a four percent a return but let's go and have a look at that particular that in detail so we look at the graph and we see an equity graph that's pretty good it's just going straight up and these areas here with the humps at the top there represent the times when we had to top up over and over and over and over again and i'm going to show you how that happened and just to take this particular one that that one was on the 30th of november so i'm going to have a look at the results to give you an idea how this works is you start with a negative transaction it, it, you do not cash the negative transaction you keep them open so you're negative the price goes to the next grid level you open another transaction goes to the next level you open another transaction goes to the next level and you open another transaction and then it starts retracing back and as you can see as it's retracing back it creates positive transactions for there and the negative ones reduce and at that particular point uh, 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 your situation becomes profitable and you've actually made 66 cents in this particular uh, example now here's a more simple one that only went up two levels so it went up two levels came back and there it produced another 66 cents so you're making basic between 50 and 60 cents every time this happens and on you go sometimes it's a one-time and sometimes it's a two-time event sometimes it's a three-time event but that's basically how the system works so we were looking i think it was the 30th of november so 
All right, so so there's the account. Sometimes, as you can say, it goes up uh, up six, but the 30th of, of November might have been a very long run. So let's go and find that long run. Okay, so there's a long <coughs> there's a long run at the 30th of November. Let's see if there was another one. If that was the worst one. Looks like that was the worst one. Okay, so what happened there was we opened, uh, this transaction went negative. We opened one more, one more, one more, and so on. And then there was a retracement and the, the uh, and I'm not quite sure if these were sales or buys, but let's say there were sales. Those sales went positive. Those sales went less negative, And they ended up in a net po positive situation. So if you look at the balance before, it was... 37, uh, 37, 32. Now it is 37, 96. So we made a couple of cents profit. And that's what we mean by loss recovery. So instead of incurring the first loss, we've actually made a profit on our loss recovery process. So um, so the results, let's, again, let's have a look again, were $400.00. And uh, the uh, if, if you look at the graph, it, it, it didn't look like we actually ran into any problems because even with all those open trades, you're only uh, using 0 0.1 lots per trade. So even if you had 20 uh, transactions open, in fact, let's go and have a look how many transactions there were open on the 30th. Um, nine ten so there are ten transactions open on on that particular situation and even if it went to 20 it wouldn't have been much because you're only um, risking 0 0.1 on this uh, lot uh, on this loss recovery process okay so that's the basic model and it also represents a low risk model because it's almost got a you know a pretty straight uh, equity chart so let's see if we can improve this. So that's not, that's model one. And if you are interested, here are the settings for model one, which is basically a neutral situation over here. All right. So so what we say now, and, and I'm, I'm going to just keep things simple. I'll keep the gap size the same. Um, I'm going to start saying, what if we had different settings for the uh, lot increase rate and, and or for the uh, closure level and normally okay so now we've seen those results uh, and they're quite low risk results for these particular settings and here are the results for those settings and these are the ones that we're going to be measuring ourselves again against but we are not in this case going for the highest profits we are going for the safest profits in other words we w want to have profits that don't create excessive risks so let's go and have a look at these settings again okay so here we have the settings and as i said those are probably the most important settings those three there and the price gap one but which i'm not going to change for now so the first thing to do is say what if instead of using the same lot sizing for your next transaction what if we double that or maybe maybe not double but let's let's say we went halfway to doubling it let's say we increased it by 50 percent and i'll show you how that happens so we increase it by 50 percent and we keep those other two the same and let's just see if that makes a change so i'm going to run run that having increased the lot size when a negative uh, transaction occurs you would increase it by 50 percent at a time okay so let's have a look if what, what's happened oh now look at that huge jump in um, in profitability for this particular system and let's go and have a look at the graph so the graph's not as smooth as before this period on i think this might still be on the 30th let's have a look yes it's still on the 30th uh looks a little bit more risky but the income has uh, gone up four times so let's go and have a look at what has happened on the 30th so we go back to results 
uh, we go to the 30th of, of November. Okay, so here's the, 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 the spike that occurred on the 30th, the 30th of November. And let's have a look at the sequence of events. So we had, uh, it started with one, uh, it started with one, and then one again, two, three, five, and it increases by 50%, but because of rounding, uh, um, the, it's not obvious at first. And uh, then it, you can see how the increase happened. It went up, went up, went up. And now the, the lot sizing at the top here is four lots, which what that means is that now the retracement or the correction in the trend only needs to be quite small to recover all of the previous trends losses. So you can see here we've got, uh, we've got 12, 13 losses and only three of the profits made up all of those losses in fact it didn't only make up but it must probably made a, a nice profit if we look at the previous balance 851 and it ended up with uh, 1122 so there was about $300 made in this loss recovery process so that gives you an idea of the, the efficiency of increasing your lot sizing as you go along and look at the uh, nice increase in profitability. Okay, so that's another strategy. What you do is you increase your, your um, uh, lot sizing as you go along. And I, I, I think 150 is a, is a good, good number to use and uh, then the, the other one as i said is the uh, oh maybe before we go on to that now if we look at this report here we'll see that the maximum drawdown there was 1764 now that's a little bit high so i'm going to just show you a refinement that you could do and i'm not sure if it will work but uh, but let's say in this case we're saying start the lot increase immediately on on the first negative one you start immediately let's say we built build in a uh, start only after three negatives were encountered so i'm going to run this so th that's the only change i've made and i'll say okay okay and i'm going to run it again and let's just see what the drawdown if there's an effect on the drawdown in terms of that adjustment because again as I mentioned earlier we're not going for the best result we're going for the safest result so let's have a look so it's dropped the profitability down and the drawdown is still a little bit high so it hasn't really helped that much uh, and let's have a look at the graph Again, the 30th of November is still a, a, a bad time. And uh, let's have a look at the results on the 30th of November. I think this might be the similar situation uh, that we looked at earlier on the 30th of November. Now, have a look here. So the first transaction was negative. The second one's negative. The third one. So, so it only started increasing on the fourth negative one. So, uh, so that caused a delay in the lot sizing and as you can see the maximum lots that we opened here were a lot smaller very important because you know your account preservation is most important in this loss recovery process so that was quite small and again three only three of the transactions were needed to recover all of the losses for the last 14 transactions 14 transactions uh, uh, only three transactions re uh, require to recover that loss okay so let's have a look at the so if you want to do optimization I would say you you need to use that kind of optimization that I've set out there to see what is the best number but I'm just using um, conceptual uh, numbers at the moment I'm not looking for optimization levels all right so now let's go to the closure the closure level 
Now, let's see what effect the closure level has on this. And, and for this purpose, I'm going to also just use 150. So in other words, uh, um, the last transaction that's been opened, the target for that one, if the gap size for the last transaction was 10 pips, the actual target would be 15 pips because that's 150% of the actual target. So let's have a look what effect those two, uh, the, that transaction has overall. So so what where we at at the moment? We're at 900. So let's see if that affects the result. And also let's have a look at the drawdown in. Okay, so profitability has gone up quite a bit. Drawdown hasn't really come down that much. And um, and let's have a look at the graph. Graph's more or less the same. It's still going up. It's got that big jump there and on it went like that and let's go and have, have a look at the uh, the results on the 30th of November okay so here are the results for the 30th of November now firstly the you'll have noticed there were f fewer transactions because this run ended uh, uh, when there's 1.9 uh, a lot's required. I think the previous one was uh, uh, most probably two. So, so it actually reduced the, uh, the, the levels of recovery. So we've actually improved the risk. So, so it's reduced the number of open levels that were required to do this recovery. And there is the recovery that's occurred. And again, let's go and have a look at the size of the recovery. We go up here. It was 798. Seven nine eight, and here we have nine seven eight. So it is roughly two hundred dollars profit that was made in this loss recovery process. Must probably too much, uh, and if you think it's too much, you can just change that setting that I had for one hundred and fifty for the closure rates. You can must probably make one hundred and forty or so on. So the purpose of this video was really to show you where the critical adjustments are required uh, uh, the uh, the closure level and the lot size increase rate and the start uh, start of the loss those are the critical settings that you need to refine to get a balance between a nice income and the risks involved and the risks involved is you want to keep that ladder of negative trades as small as possible. Now you can do that by experimentation, uh, by optimization, but I think this this has given testers of this loss recovery EA, the profit retriever, some ideas on where to focus and what to do to get, to get to develop strategies that are firstly safe and that are profitable. If I were to optimize this EA I would be optimizing it on that and those are the settings I would be using uh, the price I would use those settings for the price gap in fact I must probably go something like that and make that a 2 and that I would do and that I would do and and up oh, and that one. So so there's also what I'm providing you with now is a optimization template. So if you want to do some optimization, then this is the type of template I would recommend. However, you need to do it using tick data. So it might run for a few hours, uh, uh, running that particular optimization. What your expectation level should be for loss recovery. Uh, processes and EAs is you, is a return of between 5% a month and 10% a month. If you are getting over 10% a month, it means you're exposing yourself to too much risk. And if you're getting below 5%, it means you are not uh, being aggressive enough with your loss recovery. So those are the guidelines that you should be aiming at. Not, not uh, So in this case, if you look at the year, uh, we've generated 13 percent return uh, on that month's trading and that is fairly acceptable in fact it might be too aggressive we can 
down tone it a little bit to get it down down to about 10% level but that is the expectation level that you should be going for now I hope I've given you some uh, ideas on creating strategies for your particular trading instruments that you ha have in mind and also to focus on these two settings as your main settings for success in this trading and then your third one there so if I were to optimize those are the three big main ones that need optimization from me Alex deploy cheerio